Hello and welcome back. My name is Evan Daly and I create game dev tutorials for the interwebs. In this episode I want to show you how to control a property of a material through a script. So for instance I've got this dissolve burn material that came with the amplify shader editor and it's got this dissolve amount property and it starts off at zero and as it approaches one you can see the material sorts to sort of starts to dissolve away and then once we reach one the material has completely dissolved. And so we're going to control that with a C sharp script called dissolve controller. Dissolve spelled with two S's. And I guess I'll just call it dissolve control. And drop that onto the object itself. Okay, so it has not finished compiling, so I'll just ignore that error. Um, for some reason, Unity and Visual Studio have been acting kind of weird lately. It's taking a really, lo really long time to compile my scripts. Um, oh, all right, so there it is. We've got Dissolve Control. I can just double click on that to open it up in Visual Studio. And uh, while that opens, if you don't know what Amplify Shader Editor is, it it is a node-based shader and material editor. It's it's pretty fantastic. I definitely recommend checking it out if you don't have it. And right now, it's 30% off on the Asset Store. There is a link in the description below. And uh, it allows you to make um, really awesome stuff like this very easily. You can create different properties and, uh, like for instance, the diffuse wood texture here and the emissive texture um, could both be textures within one material and then you could use like a slider to um, sort of scale up how much light is being emitted from the brighter areas. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty nifty. I, I really like it. Um, Alright, so Visual Studio is now open. For some reason it opened Visual Studio 2015 instead of 2017. Uh, oh, actually, that is 2017. That's weird. Usually I've got a dark theme. I don't know why I'll, it opened in white all of a sudden. Anyway, um, so we want to control the material with this script. So the first thing we're going to do is access the model's renderer. So we've got this shader ball object and on the object is a mesh renderer and then the material lives on the mesh renderer component. So we're first going to grab this mesh renderer and to do that all we need to do is create a class level variable of type renderer. So I'll say public renderer enter mesh renderer and now to grab that in the start function so this is just going to run one time when the game starts up or I guess when the object is loaded into the scene and we'll say mesh renderer dot get or I'm sorry uh, mesh renderer what am I doing here mesh renderer equals and then we're going to reference the game object that the script is attached to and we'll say dot get component. And now we're going to grab a component of type renderer. And voila. So that, that's all we have to do to access the mesh renderer component on this game object. And then once we have a reference to that, we need to grab the material. So we can say public uh, material instanced material. And all that is is mesh renderer dot material, like so. And so now those properties should show up right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And now you can see uh, right here we've got the mesh renderer. It did find the mesh renderer on our shader ball, and it also did find the dissolve burn material. And you can see it says instance here. Um, so that means we do have a clone of the material. So for instance, um, if I duplicated this, there's a material on this one and there's a material on this one, and they have their own um, dissolve burn property. So here I'm editing it globally, um, but the script will only reference the actual instance of the material, which will only be on, on one model. Um, so I, I can demonstrate that later if you're interested. Um, all right, so we've got the material now. And I'm just going to update it in the update function. So I'm going to say instance material dot set. And now we've got all these different set methods. So we could set a color, we could set a float, 
we could set an int. Now, what we want, like what we want to call here, depends on what what property we're trying to set in the material. So, if I go ahead and open up the material in the Amplify Shader Editor, we've got Dissolve Burn. I'm going to double click that. Uh, no. All right. So now I've got this over over here. And uh, th th this code will work for any type of material that has a property. Um, you don't actually need the Amplify Shader Editor for this to work. Um, but th it's just nice to see it here. So we've got Dissolve Amount. That is the value we're trying to play with. And that's just part of this um, Dissolve Burn node setup. And if I click on it, you can see right here it is a float. Um, we could also do this with a vector. Like if we were trying to feed position information into the into the node setup, um, maybe maybe you want things to change based on where the camera's at, or maybe maybe as the camera moves, you want to blur the model or something like that. Um, that's very doable. You would you would simply call the set vector method to feed floats into this triplet. Um, but since we all we have is a single float value clamped between zero and one, we're going to use the set float method. So I'm going to close out of this. Open this back up and set float. Now you can see this expects a name ID and a float value. So the name ID, once again, if I open this up, um, we've got dissolve amount. So the, the string name is capital D and then space capital amount. Um, but the actual name of the property that we're trying to edit is this guy this guy right here underscore dissolve amount so it, it stripped out the space and it put an underscore before before the D um, so that is relevant here so we're going to say underscore dissolve amount dissolve as two S's and so now now we know the name ID and all we have to do is assign a value to that so to start off I think I'll just set it to 0.5 and it is evaluating to a double um, doubles and floats are just different um, floating point representations. You, you don't need to understand what's happening behind the scenes here. Um, to make this compile though, you need to inform C Sharp that this is actually a float, not a double. And you can do that by typing a capital F. Alright, so when we start off, the dissolve amount is set to zero. When I hit play, it should grab the renderer grab the material and set the dissolve amount to 0.5 and it worked excellent so the next thing I want to do is give the user some control over this so I'm going to say uh, float dissolve uh, oops dissolve with two s's amount equals input dot get axis and I'm just going to give it the horizontal axis. And then I'll feed dissolve amount back into our set float function. Like so. Get rid of the space. And compile. Alright, so once that finishes, um, if you don't know about the horizontal input thing, that is in the project settings slash input. And uh, we have all these different axes set up. There is two instances of horizontal. So the first one uses the left or right arrow keys, or the A or D keys, as well as any sort of left or right joystick input. Um, and so basically, uh, hitting the left uh, arrow key gives you a negative one. Hitting the right arrow key gives you a positive one. And so since our value is clamped between 0 and 1, uh, we're just going to use the right arrow. And so now I'll hit play, and right arrow, and you can see, as I hold the right arrow, it goes up to 1, now it's completely dissolved, I release, and the axis goes back to 0, and now we're completely opaque. I mentioned earlier that this does only happen on one instance of the model, so if I duplicate this and remove my dissolve control from the model itself, and then hit play, you can see... Um, it is, it is only affecting the instance of the material on our game object with the script attached to it. So that's that's good. That means we're not going to um, mess with other materials in the scene with our script. Um, and then just as a quick demonstration, 
I'm going to create a 3D cube. And I want to kind of do a similar thing where I'm just going to make a quick script and control a property on this standard shader. Um, so it comes with the default material. And I, actually, you know, since it is um, the the default, we can't play with metallic or smoothness. Um, but I, I will create just a quick material. So why don't we call this simple material. I'm going to drop it onto the model. Um, now we should see we've got metallic. I can drag that up like that. Smoothness. Whatever. Um, so why don't we play with these through a script. And I'm just going to right click, create C-sharp script. Uh, standard material control. Drop that onto the model. And we should be able to do basically exactly the same thing. Um, I'm just going to copy my dissolve control logic, move it over here. And now instead of setting the dissolve amount, I'm going to try to edit the... Um, which, what should we do here? Uh, why don't I do the metallic? And so I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure the name of this property is going to be underscore metallic. So why don't we just try that? Metallic. And if it's not, we're going to have to just quickly check the Unity documentation. Uh, two L's, yep, let's try that. And it worked. So that that's great. So you can do the same thing with smoothness, you can do the same thing with metallic. Um, and you could also use this to set um, these, te these textures. Uh, it, it would be a, a different method call, but basically it would be the same thing. You would just say instanced material dot and then there's probably like a set texture yeah right there set texture and then you would give it the name of the field and the actual value you want to set it to um so yeah uh, i'm i'm really excited about this you know it, it's really cool to be able to especially with emissive properties it's really cool to be able to um, play with those values uh, and make things glow or like breathe and change different colors um, so yeah, it's, it's very useful, and I hope you guys uh, get some use out of this. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.